right, talking about log functions today and their domain, there's some misunderstanding here about this, so can we just take a quick look at like four or five examples? Um, we know this, that if we take something like log base, well, it doesn't matter, log base 4 of x, <clears throat> the domain of that, the domain of that is x must be greater than 0. And we can talk about why this is true. Not the least of the proofs is that logarithmic functions are the inverse of exponential functions so we can prove that we can prove the relationship there and then switch the domain and range values but just look at this for a second because this I think a lot of people are willing to buy this and they're willing to be okay with that say okay this value right here has got to be greater than zero this is where it gets a little bit weird because you have a lot of really smart students who are trying to apply good logic to bad teaching so we have log base three again this is not significant what this number is for the purpose of what we're talking about. It's not what causes domain. But we have x plus 2. So what's the domain here? If you don't mind, I'll put domain just as a capital D. The domain here, and so we have students who will say x must be greater than, than 0. And then they're told, no, that's not, that's not right. It has to be greater than negative 2. And they said, I thought you said that x has to be greater than 0. So here's where the clarification comes in. When we look at log functions, we look at this piece right here, the piece inside the parentheses right next to the log, and we call this piece the argument. This piece is called the argument. And the argument must be greater than zero. So it is true. In, in calculus, the way we talk about it is that we'd say this. We kind of look at it twice and say that we'd say that this whole thing is x. So the argument, this whole thing is x. But what you end up doing either way is this. You end up taking this argument out and saying, okay, the argument, the argument that we had, which was x plus 2, that's got to be greater than 0. And then you just do some simple algebra and move stuff around. You say, okay, well, x has got to be greater than negative 2. There's your domain. x must be greater than negative 2. Right? And for the linear ones, it's really, really easy. Let's do one more linear problem. So we could take, um, I don't know, log base 9 of 4x minus 3. So, okay, well, what's the domain of this function? The function is linear, so we'd go ahead and pull this piece out. We'd say, okay, we're buying the idea that really we're considering this whole piece here, x. <coughs> so if this whole piece has to be greater than 0, then we would get something that looks more like this. We have our 4x, our argument, 4x minus 3, has to be greater than 0. We do a little bit of algebra here, move the 3 over, divide by 4, and we get that x has got to be greater than 3 fourths. And if you look back, if you put in any number greater than 3 fourths, if you put it in here, you're going to get back a positive number. So the argument stays positive. Here, if we put any number in for x here that's greater than negative 2, that number plus this 2 will be greater than 0, so it's going to work, right? When it gets a little trickier is when you get something like this. You get log base, you know, I just stick with some log base 3 for no reason, just log base 3, of x squared minus 9. And you look at this and you're like, okay, that's not linear. How do I figure the domain out here? Well, that's a little bit trickier, and the way I would do that was this. I would say that... I would start in the same place. I'd say the argument x squared minus 9, x squared minus 9 has got to be greater than 0. That's important. And then I'd start solving. Um, you can do this lots of ways. You can move this over and take the square root. Usually I do, I would, because this is difference of squares, I would just go ahead and take this. <coughs> it is greater than 0. But then it gets weird, right? Because we have, I'm going to put equals 0. Just to be honest, okay, x can't equal negative 3 x can't equal 3, and if you look, that makes sense because 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0, and we know that the argument's got to be greater than 0. It can't be negative 3 because negative 3 squared is 9 again, and 9 minus 9 is 0, can't be that. Then the question is, how do I write the domain? You, can, you know, can I just write the domain that x can't equal this and x can't equal that? The answer is no, you cannot. So it gets to be a little bit, a little bit trickier. So what you do here is this. You would kind of graph this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph this thing in my head. I'm like, you know what? Okay, this thing looks kind of like, I'm graphing this. Graphing this. Okay, this looks kind of like this. 
like that. Let's back up like this. This is negative 3. This is 3, isn't it? And from here, I would just look at the height values and say, you know what? Here, the height values of the function, right over here, they're all greater than 0. Here, all the height values are greater than 0. But if you look at this area right here, the height values are less than 0, aren't they? So I'd just start to formalize that, and I'd say, okay, that the domain is... Uh, negative infinity to negative 3, not including either one, and this union is all things, and 3 to positive infinity is one way you could write it. Or you could write it the other way. You could say x has got to be less than negative 3, but greater than, ne oh, I'm sorry, and greater than negative infinity. Then you could use the union sign. Again, this is just a union Union, which means all things, the union sign. You could use the union sign again, and then you could write this piece out, and that would be x is greater than 3, but less than positive infinity. Now, I was really careful. If you notice here, I did not put less than or equal, equal to here, and I didn't put greater than or equal to here, because we are not allowed to have these values either, right? Okay, you guys, I hope this was really helpful. This stuff is really doable. It's really, really doable. Um... You know what, I'm going to take one second to show you this. I hope you're going to stay with me for a second. I'm going to show you this. I did some of the graphs of this stuff just to kind of show it to you. And this is what I did. This is exactly the stuff we were talking about before. Let's look at this one. Here, I, I put these two functions, and I'm like, okay, log base 3 of x plus 2. And then if you see at x is equal on the, on the inside, on the argument function, from x is negative 2, and every place to the right, this thing is positive. So that's how this domain is here. This is a vertical asymptote right here. And I did the same thing here, right? And I did the same thing here. And that's how that all worked out. So, hey, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Your comments are always welcome. Thanks.